I've always preferred the concrete jungle over the real forests. Some people might feel turned off by the idea of being surrounded by stone, squeezed in with millions of other people, seeing nothing of nature except the occasional tree or weed growing through the cracks in the cement sidewalks. I find being surrounded by the creations of mankind far more soothing than being in the woods. A forest in my eyes is like a giant stomach. Living things go in, they die, and are broken down into food for the rest of the earth. I know this is an extreme view, but I can't help feeling how I feel. That's why, when I was transferred to a small town in upstate New York from my cushy office in downtown Manhattan, I was less than thrilled. While it was nice upgrading from a one-bedroom apartment to a whole house, the fact that the house was surrounded by trees and it took a 15-minute drive until I saw even the barest sign of a neighborhood made me very uncomfortable. But I knew that I had to do this if I had any ambition in climbing up my career ladder, so I had to just grin and bear it. The house wasn't too bad. It was an old Victorian style, like many of the houses anywhere near it, but it was outfitted with many modern comforts. The company was renting it for me, and I only had to stay there for around five months, but I was glad those five months were going to be spent in some comfort. The worst part was learning to go to sleep. I'm used to the background noise, but the almost complete silence of not only the house, but the surrounding woods was jarring. It took me at least a week before I finally got a good night's rest. Slowly, like getting used to the silence, I also got used to being surrounded by the forest. For the first week, I wouldn't go near any of the trees at all. Time went by, and I got more used to my surroundings. After about two months of acclimation, I found my unease subsiding, and I began to even start taking walks in the woods around me. The smells were far more appealing than the typical smell of the city, and the wildlife I saw were quite charming. I even took up some casual bird watching as a hobby. It was in the fourth month there that I began to notice them. It first happened when I was taking a deeper than usual walk into the forest. I had just decided I'd gone far enough and turned around to head back home. In front of me, on a large pine tree I had used as the turning back point, was a clear chalk outline on the trunk. It was a very basic outline, and small as well. So, it had to have been the framework of a child. It was like a kid had pressed themselves against the trunk, fingers splayed, and someone had intricately drawn each tiny detail. There was no real trail that led here, and there were no signs that anyone else beside me had ever been there. I looked at the outline, puzzling in my head a moment why it would be there. I thought that maybe the last people who had rented the house had had kids, and maybe they had gone here and done this. I decided that must have been it, and then continued my way back home. It was a bit unsettling at how fresh the drawing seemed, but it hadn't rained since before I even moved into the house, so I thought that maybe that's how it stayed so new. It was only a few days before I found the time to take another walk in the woods. This time, it was a different direction from my last walk. I had gotten maybe half a mile into the trees, when on a large ash tree, I spotted another chalk outline. This one was just as detailed as the first one, with only slight changes. It was a little bit taller than the first one, and the outline looked like the child was wearing a dress. I went to take a closer look, when a rustling sound behind me made me stop and turn around. There. There was nothing there. And when I turned around to face the chalk outline again, I jumped a little in surprise. One of the arms, which I could have sworn was down at the side, was now raised up. It made the chalk outline look like it had been in the process of waving. I stared at the thing in confusion, as I was sure that the arms had both been down at its side. While I wasn't scared or anything like that, I decided that even if my brain had just played a trick on itself, this situation was getting a little creepy, 
and I didn't want to get any closer to the thing. Sure, if there were two kids the previous renters had, there could be two chalk outlines. But this was just too weird for me. I turned around and went straight home from there. That night, in place of the usual silence of the woods, the weather decided to have a lot of wind. Having gotten used to the silence, the sudden noise was very nerve-shattering. Every time the wind would howl and cause the trees of the house to creak, my eyes would pop open of their own volition and look around my bedroom. Eventually, I got so tired that even those noises didn't startle me out of slumbering. But before I finally drifted off to an undisturbed sleep, I swore I could hear children's giggling hidden within the wind. The next few days passed by uneventfully, and when the skies finally opened up, I decided to go for a walk in the woods during the rain. It was very relaxing, and something I had never really experienced before. The squishing of the wet ground under my boots, the smell of the ozone mixed with the natural smell of the trees, and the sounds of the raindrops as they collided with leaves and branches and puddles was very euphoric. While I hadn't planned to go far into the woods, I lost track of time and wandered a little further than I expected. All that jubilation vanished as I stepped into a little clearing and caught sight of the trees around me. On seven trees in front of me, forming a semicircle around me, were different chalk outlines. All of them were different sizes of children, even more detailed than the ones I'd seen before. These outlines, while they didn't have any facial or body features, had their clothing filled in with different coloured chalk. Some wore shorts and t-shirts, and some had dresses. All the clothing different styles and colours. That wasn't the creepiest thing about them, though. I could clearly see the rain splash onto their lines, from head to toe. And yet, there was no smudging whatsoever. This was when fear began creeping into my heart, and though the chalk outlines were all in a neutral stance, an aura of menace seemed to radiate from them. Their blank faces seemed to be staring at me in an accusatory tone, like I had done or discovered something that I shouldn't have. Their gazes kept me frozen in my tracks, and it wasn't the coldness of the rain that caused the shiver up my back. I took a few steps backwards, and then turned and sprinted as fast as my rain boots would allow me back to the house. That night, as I was trying to get some sleep, noises began disturbing all over my house. Downstairs, I could hear certain walls creaking, like something large was pressing itself into the sides of my house. The moment I got out of bed to investigate, however, all sounds ceased completely. Unnerved, I got back into bed and tried to go back to sleep. Whatever was out there wasn't done with me, though. The tapping began soon after, almost unnoticeable at first. It came from downstairs, from the same areas the creaking had started, but this time, it didn't stop when I got out of bed. Slowly, the tapping became louder, as if a whole crowd of people were outside, knocking on my wall. Blended in with the tapping, I swore I could also hear the whispers of children. I could not make out any word, but their tone suggested they were up to no good, and I did not want to find out what mischief they were concocting. I stayed awake in my room, with the door locked and a dresser pushed in front of it, until the light of dawn streaked through my window, and the tapping finally faded out. Very slowly, I unblocked my door and checked out the inside of the house. Nothing inside the house seemed disturbed. There was no sign of entry, and all the doors and windows were still locked. Gathering up the courage to step outside, I found that the outside walls were a different story. There wasn't any physical damage, but all of the outside walls were covered with the chalk outlines of children. They were all as detailed as the seven I'd seen in the clearing, but there was far more than seven. 
more like 50 or 60. Many seemed like they were piled on top of one another, as if they were climbing and fighting one another to get somewhere, and it was very obvious where they were trying to get to. My downstairs window. A few of them even managed to get their fingers on the sills, hanging on in poses like they were trying to pull themselves up and through them. The worst thing, however, was that one more detail had been added to the outlines. Smiles. All of them were smiling, and not in a happy, innocent way. I moved out that very day. I spent the rest of my time upstate in a motel room at my own expense. The only time I left was for work or to buy groceries. I finally felt safe again on my car ride back to Manhattan, even managing to crack a smile. The smile vanished when I offered to pay for the cleanup of the outside of the house to get rid of all the chalk outlines, and my boss gave me a confused look. He told me that the caretaker had dropped by after I left, and emailed my boss that the inside and outside of the house were spotless and to thank me for taking such great care of the place. To this day, even on the brightest of days and on the busiest of roads, I cross the street, I cross the street when I see chalk drawings on the sidewalk, drawn by smiling, giggling children. <laughs>